Thank you, Jeff. Um, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit tonight about um, an upcoming City of Fort Worth project, Westport Parkway project. My name is Bradley Radovich, and I'm one of the project managers in the Transportation and Public Works Department in the Capital Delivery Team. And I'm on the I'm the project manager for this upcoming Westport Parkway construction project from Alta Vista to Keller Hazlitt. We'd ordinarily give this presentation, but um, for the coronavirus protocols that we've all been living through. So we'll try to make this the best, uh, the next best thing for this uh, format here. So um, as, as Jeff mentioned, um, we'll, we'll hold our questions to the end and um, sorry. Um, and, and stay muted, that would help the presentation flow better and clearer, hopefully. Um, joining us tonight um, are the lead engineer for the project, um, Jacob Hayes. He's a professional engineer from Half Associates, which is a prominent consulting engineer in Fort Worth. And Jeffrey Allen, who you've already inter been introduced to here, he's our TPW communications specialist. So this presentation is meant to provide some information about the scope of the project, um, to update you on the schedule, give you a heads up about what to expect with the upcoming construction and provide you with the necessary contact information as we move forward. So tonight I'd like to cover a few things on the, on the agenda here. Um, I'll be talking about the project funding sources, um, followed by an overview of the scope of the project, the configuration of the new roadway and then finally, a little bit about the schedule and the phasing of the project, how it will be built, um, and the time frame. So, first, the funding um, is part of the it's part of the 2018 bond program for the City of Fort Worth. Um, this location was selected on based on several criteria and needs, um, including the master thoroughfare plan for the city. Um, the, the need to reduce congestion and improve safety at the Keller Hazlitt and Alta Vista intersection, and generally to provide a more efficient neighborhood uh, connectivity. So approximately five, uh, $7.49 million um, was allocated from the 2018 bond program for this project. Um, the remainder of the money, about $570,000 came from the Twenty uh, tax note reserves. Um, just to note that the 2018 bond program uh, was voted on by the residents of Fort Worth in May of uh, 2018. So this is an, an, a higher level of view of the project. This slide shows basically the limits and the location. Um, I'll present a closer view in just a moment, a couple slides from now. So you can bear with me. Um, the project limits are from Keller Hazlitt, uh, just west of the Ponderosa Ranch intersection, um, to the recently constructed roundabout at Westport and Alta Vista. There's also a recently constructed roundabout at Beach, which is not shown on this photo here or on this um, this little I, exhibit. So, um, but. Uh, that, that will connect to that roundabout as well on the south part. Overall, the length of the new roadway is about 1,800 feet, about uh, three-eighths of a mile. So uh, short sections of Keller Hazlitt, which is shown here on um, below the new Westport, um, will be modified and connected, uh, teed into the new Westport Parkway. and the same for Ponderosa Ranch Road, which will be also modified here and will tee into the new extension as well. Um, just a few quick um, project quantities and statistics. Um, like I said, it was 1,800 linear feet of roadway improvements. 
Um, it's a four lane section, so um, quite a bit of concrete. Um, sidewalk improvements along the Ponderosa Ranch um, are given as well as trail and improvements along Westport Parkway. Um, mixed use mixed use trail that will connect to the existing uh, park um, Rook Park trail. Uh, 2300 linear feet of uh, new storm drain system, uh, mixed use concrete trail is generally it's generally 10 foot wide, but it's between eight and 12 based on certain conditions uh, that we encounter in the field on, in, on site, site restrictions. Um, the roadway and trail lighting will be provided um, and about 1150 linear feet of waterline extension is also included in the project. So this slide is a little bit more detailed um, at the look at the West Park improvements. We overlaid it onto a recent aerial image for your reference, um, but it is laid out on the page uh, to try to get the most bang for our buck on the page. So the north arrow you'll see in the upper corner up on the right is um, kind of 45 degree angle there. So, but it will orient you to the rest of the project. So um, the recently constructed roundabout at Alta Vista and Westport is shown in pink. And it bounds to the north, um, basically on the right side of the image here. Um, the roundabout at Keller Hazlitt and Beach Street Extension, also shown in pink, bounds the project on the south, or the you know on the left side of this image here. Um, the proposed four-lane divided Westport Extension and two-lane undivided Ponderosa Ranch Road are shown in yellow. The sidewalk, the trail and park improvements are shown in blue on either side of this Westport Parkway and the either side of Ponderosa Ranch here. Keller Hazlitt Road is to tee into the new Westport Parkway. It's shown in green here. Um, there's no sidewalk or trail alongside this road, new roadway stub. Overall, the construction staging, when we start to build this, will be finalized with the contractor as the project starts. It depends somewhat on the status of uh, the property negotiations down on the, the southern end of the project. It's anticipated that phase one will begin in the northern segment of the roadway at Alta Vista and extend uh, unhindered down to Keller Hazlitt Road intersection. Um, the roundabout will remain open during construction um, for the life of the project. Keller Hazlitt will remain open during the first phase, but we'll have to close it for phase two when we construct the south end of the project, including the stub. Um, Ponderosa Ranch here um, will essentially have to be closed um, during the project, the entire project duration. Um, for park users, Waspers Park is right here, um, and at least we we are going to keep one at least one loop of the of the trail park trail open at all times for the residents. Um, we want to be safe and keep uh, the construction activity away from pedestrians and bike users and so forth. But uh, we'll 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 keep one lane or one loop at at all times open. So. Um, when the project is complete, the original configuration is going to be uh, restored and there'll be some new um, pavement and new new concrete pavement and it'll be very nice. So um, it's a little bit about the staging there. Um, here's a shot of the cross section kind of describes the, the four lanes of Westport Parkway. Um, it's uh, on the city right away, 110 feet wide. Um, the roadway sections are each 23 foot six between the curbs. Um, the outside lane slightly wider 
uh, drainage, the drainage structures are on that side of the roadway. So you see the water drains to, to the outside. Um, there are 10 foot wide mixed use trails for bikes and, and uh, walkers, runners, pedestrians um, on each side. So um, the roadway is high quality reinforced concrete on top of a stabilized subgrade. Um, this type of construction we use for um, a long life and we expect a long life out of this, um, out of these materials. So a little bit about the schedule. Um, we've done, um, we've gone through a long process already <laughs> to design through the design. And so we're now, at this exciting stage here where we've completed the design and procured a contractor. Um, the contract has been vetted through the city's legal and financial uh, people and the contract has been awarded. Um, we still are finalizing the right of way acquisition on the south end, as I mentioned earlier, um, but we do have contingency plans to, to start work on the majority of the project um, where we do have the right of way acquired. So um, while the final parcels are negotiated. Um, the next steps will be a kickoff meeting with the contractor in the first weeks in April, and that precedes the beginning of the construction. Um, this construction will take about eight months, we anticipate. Um, construction is only allowed in daytime hours, and we, we believe will be substantially complete by January of 2022. Of course, we always shoot for faster, but this is um, the schedule as, as we see it today. This slide uh, shows some of the details of the bid phase. Um, the low bidder was Jackson Construction. They're from Fort Worth. Um, their bid was found to be responsive um, they have experience, significant experience in Fort Worth with projects. Um, the bids overall were very competitive and um, below engineers' estimates. Um, the bids, the closeness of the bids is a good sign for me as an engineer. Um, it's, we interpret that as being a good set of documents. Um, and I think that's just one indication that makes me think that uh, this project is going to be successful, um, but, but we do have to keep working hard at it. So, um, and then um, we have, we are aware of the many residents around this area are very concerned about their mobility. Um, what with the text dot project on, on 170 and so forth. And I personally don't have a lot of answers for you at, on those issues, but um, I noticed that uh, Billy Havard is the project manager and he, he has joined the call, but um, this, this, uh, this is about the Westport project, but um, I wanted to put his contact information up there um, in case we, you do have questions about um, the coordination with that project. Um, as far as the, the closures of the crossings and so forth. Um, those things are changing. It's a very dynamic pro project. And um, I think that any answers that we might give today might, might be um, changing as we go. So um, I'm not qualified to give that, but we can discuss that a little bit later. So um, I just wanted to recognize this project as being important to the residents and um, close to our project. So we do, we are aware of the um, challenges in the area. So um, and uh, so I'm, this is, we're excited to begin this project. Um, I'd like to share my contact information again. Um, in the event that you have any additional questions or concerns I don't, tonight, um, I've shown uh, our contractor's information as well, um, and my inspector for the project, the head inspector for the city of Fort Worth. These two individuals have 
are going to be gearing up uh, as we as we approach the construction. So um, until then, I'm probably the best source for sure um, of at least trying to get you the information you need. Um, but they'll be more involved as we ramp up the construction. Um, that and um, Mr. Havard's contact information are probably the ones that you might be looking for tonight. Um, we, I appreciate your listening to my presentation and joining us tonight. And um, I, I have a couple of colleagues that joined me, like I mentioned, uh, Mr. Uh, Jacob and, um, and, and Jeff. Um, they might be able to, since I can't really see the chat windows, they might be able to read some of the chat questions if there are any. And with that, I can take questions um, uh, from anybody that might have them. I think if you, if are there any chat questions, Jeff? Bradley, yeah, I did get one uh, question that came in. Um, the road, Keller Hazlitt, the, um, from the south end. Oh, are you there? Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead, yes. Okay, yeah, the road, the road Keller Hazlitt, from the south end of this project to I-35 is in bad shape all the time. Uh, who's in charge of that section of that roadway, and which will see even more use now that the on-ramp from 170 to I-35 is permanently closed? Um, I can uh, put you in touch with our, I can get the public works. Um, we want to maintain the roads. Um, I'm in the capital kind of capital delivery. Um, yeah, Brad, but, this is Raul. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is, um, excuse me, this is Raul Lopez. He's my boss, my boss, the head of arterials in our group. So. <laughs> yeah, good evening. I'm, I'm the engineering manager that that oversees this type of projects, the, uh, the arterials and thoroughfares. <laughs> so for, for maintenance of roadways, uh, we can refer that to our um, maintenance division and they can take a look and, uh, and put it in schedule. They'll go out there and look at it and put it in schedule. Uh, I can't tell you what that schedule is going to be, whether it's going to be, you know, six months, a year. I couldn't tell you that. That's a different division, but we'll, we'll forward the, uh, the concern to our maintenance division. Thank you, Ralph. Great. I have another uh, another question that came in for the um, for TxDOT and for City. Um, our biggest concern in the area remains uh, closing the Alta Vista crossing at at 170 without giving us a Westport crossing. Westport does not exist on the north side of 170, and with the property owner continuing to build where the road would need to go. We need another crossing besides beach when all this is said and done. Has there been any progress on that? Yeah, this is Raul again. We are aware of, of that. We are still astonished as to how those two buildings got permitted, I believe, uh, by the county. Um, there, there, we, we have no plans. At one time, there was a conversation that a developer was going to um, basically uh, buy the properties out and, and, and coordinate with the city to to redevelop that those the, that area where the two buildings are but that that doesn't it hasn't pan panned out so um, we, we at this point we're still wondering how we're going to extend Westport Parkway um, to provide a, a different access What about truck traffic? Is it allowed on this new roadway to get to I-35? If it, I'm not, I'm not certain whether this is a commercial route or not, but I mean, standard trucks, yes, it will be allowed. Uh, I'm not sure if semis will be allowed. Um, I'm not sure if it, I, I doubt if it's a commercial route. So if it's not a commercial route, semis should, should not be on the, on the route, but we'd have to verify that. Uh, currently, trucks are not supposed to be on Keller Hazlitt from Alta Vista to Beach, but they use it all the time. 
So we forwarded that concern to um, um, the police department for enforcement. We'll just have to we'll just have to forward the concern again. Can we just can we discuss the um, right away issue at the one end? Is that something we have any detail on that we could share? So is it the right away at the south um, southeast end or southwest end? Right. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to. Um, yeah, but I, I I don't want to. Uh, <coughs> yeah, that's up. We're we're, kind of, we're dealing uh, with the property owner. Yeah, we're not we're not at liberty right. to discuss. By the way, um, I think we reason to be optimistic. It won't be a problem, for, but we hope um, so. Yeah. Um, sorry. Go ahead. Could Bradley, could you confirm that? Uh, did you say Ponderosa is going to be completely co closed during the entire construction period? Brad, do we have but, Jackson on the call about that? Is Jackson um, construction? No, no, I don't think so. But um, okay. until the, until it won't go anywhere until right until it's all connected anyway on Westport Parkway. Um, yeah. So um, I think Westport Park is constructed completely. What Ponderos? <clears throat> maybe we could open it northbound as soon as we could. But um, yeah, I think we need to work with Jackson to to um, yeah. you know um, keep it open uh, while they're constructing the, the through lanes and then tie it tie it to it once uh, once the through lanes are constructed and also. The stub out yet. Yeah, we need to go in it with Jackson. We, we don't want to close Brad, it for eight months. Raul, this is Jacob Hayes. Um, that is correct. The assumption is that Ponderosa will open during phase two, and I apologize for my cat and his horrible timing. Um, Ponderosa will reopen uh, after they construct phase one and northbound traffic uh, to the Alta Vista um, slash Westport Parkway roundabout will be um, enabled during phase one. Basically, we're going to construct the entire road between um, just shy of the Alta Vista, or sorry, the Beach Street and Keller Hazlitt roundabout. And then um, we'll come back and make those tie-ins that would necessitate the sh closure of Keller Hazlitt. So. so we're probably talking a couple of weeks, two, three weeks. Uh, yes, for those the phase two improvements, which are those connections uh, to Keller Hazlitt, both um, the temporary stub out and the ult ultimate connection at the roundabout. Okay. Yeah, we we don't want to close it the, the entire eight months. That that would be that's that's the you know the neighborhood's secondary access to um, mm -hmm. State Highway mm -hmm. 70. So. Yes, sir. That's kind of our overall phasing, and I think uh, that's up for discussion in terms of uh, how long Ponderosa is ultimately closed. Yeah, we'll we'll discuss it with the contractor. Appreciate it, Jacob. Uh, we do have a couple more questions coming in. Uh, will landscaping be provided in the medians? Yes, it will. Um, it, it will be uh, it will be uh, what organic, right? Jacob, can you <laughs> grass and? Um, um, it will not be it will not be ornamental or uh, there will not be any trees yeah. or ornamental landscaping in the medians. It will be stamped uh, concrete um, up to certain points, and oh. then it'll just be sodded like a, a typical median. Going to be a standard median, yeah. Standard sod grass. 
Great. Could you put the um, could you put the slide back up that has this construction schedule on it again, please? Yes. Um. Thank you. Also, do we know uh, will the speed limit? Would you know if the speed limit will be on this segment once it's complete? It will be 35 miles an hour in accordance with the city of Fort Worth's master thoroughfare plan. Do you know, um, do we know approximate timing per phase uh, of construction? I don't, I can't say that we, we have that uh, nailed down. The, the significant work is in phase one. So I imagine the bulk of the time is during that period, but um this is a, a nice greenfield project there's really very little to inhibit the contractor and it could go very quickly so we normally get with the contractor very early in the project and the schedule together um that both sides can live with and then we would know more then so um sorry i don't have that exact answer for you Hi, uh, this is Josh. I have a question. Sure. Um, the construction completion date of January 2022 says a right of way dependent. Um, what does that mean exactly? Have y'all accumulated all the right of way, or is there still some to be um, accumulated? Um, yeah, we still have a. Uh, we're working out a. Um, piece of the right-of-way that we do not own yet. Um, we're working on getting access to that, and we expect it to be not, expect it not to inhibit the schedule, but hopefully. And so say if this January assumes that the um, right-of-way will be acquired without uh, too much uh, delay, so. We, we anticipate being able to start construction even without the right-of-way uh, in other yeah. areas. If that were to change, we would notify uh, the neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Sure. I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, this is Mario. So, with this new construction, can we expect the traffic coming through Ponderosa to reduce? Because that has been an issue. People coming through Ponderosa, through Dove Ranch, and Lasso to go into the other side over there. Hmm. I'm not sure that the, that the traffic would reduce. Um, I'm not sure if I can speak to that exactly. It will be more efficient, um, hopefully, with this new uh, configuration. But um, I think that this project was, uh, well, the overall construction of the project will help the flow in, in the, of the traffic in the whole area, and perhaps that will contribute. But I guess I don't have any statistics for you about Ponderosa Ranch traffic. Um, uh, I don't believe, we don't believe the, the improvements will reduce the traffic on Ponderosa. Ponderosa is one of the entry points to the subdivision to north, and Alta Vista is the other entry point. So uh, this is just a connector between the existing two roundabouts, and that will increase capacity between those two points. But traffic going north or south on Ponderosa, uh, we don't believe it will impact that, those numbers. 
Um, personally, as somebody that lives in the neighborhood, I think it will impact the traffic. I think it's probably going to decrease it some because the people who live on the back part of the neighborhood, uh, Bandera Ranch and Desert Mesa and everything beyond those roads, I think they're going to find it just as easy to take our current roundabout over to on the new to the new section of roadway instead of zigzagging through the back like they do now. That's my expectation too. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I can't prove that, but I certainly would expect people to get used to that. Are you saying they would come down Ponderosa now instead? No, I'm saying they wouldn't because now some of them cut through Ponderosa to get back over there to Keller Hazlitt because otherwise they have to go almost all the way to the traffic light at 170 to do that. But once there's the round, we have the current roundabout in our neighborhood, and once the two are connected, I don't see any reason to cut back through houses to get up to that roadway. It would mm -hmm. be a longer route. Than okay. Going down, yeah. Then going down Lost Spurs, coming up to our roundabout, and cutting over that would make much more sense. Except for the people who live on Ponderosa and the roads that are off of Ponderosa, but right now a lot of people who don't live on the, those roads are using Ponderosa. And Dove Ranch. I see. Particularly, yeah. That particularly makes sense. Dove Ranch. <laughs> so. Yeah. That makes sense. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm I'm on Dove Ranch, so. <laughs> yeah, I I think it'll help you, but we'll see. Uh, I don't see anything else in chat, so um, if anyone else has any questions or comments, feel free to unmute um, and we can answer or discuss as needed. Um, this section looks great to me. Uh, this is Patty Phipson, Lost Creek Ranch, but again, our, our huge concern is that other segment that doesn't exist yet that would connect to 170. I know you've got a 170 person on the call, and I think we're just most concerned that we have some other way out of here to cross the highway other than beach, which is on not even in our neighborhood. So I don't know who's who's actually coordinating getting something done about that, but something needs to be done about that. So like, like I said before, the city is aware of the of the uh, the issue and, and and the concern, and we're looking at different ways, and we you know we've been uh, coordinating with TxDOT and possible ways to make another point point of access, but uh, that's all, in, you know, it's still <clears throat> in the in the planning stages and the throwing ideas. Okay, thank you. Sure. I do have one more question. When you um, have the picture here where you've got the new Ponderosa coming straight out and the old Ponderosa, you're, I guess you're just going to tear it up. Is What's that land right there zoned for? Like, could we be looking at a convenience store or something coming into that piece of land? or you know, On either side of Ponderosa? On the side that's not by the park. So the, the south west side i guess or northwest side between the apartments and us yeah so mm -hmm. the piece immediately to the right of the uh, beach street roundabout yeah I, I don't recall off the top of my head what it's zoned but um <clears throat> the, the owner of that property is the same owner as um that single family dwelling um at the end of ponderosa on the east side of ponderosa Okay. It's all it's all one ownership. Yeah, because those houses right there, I think, are the ones that are most concerned about what happens behind them. So. Correct. Yeah, I don't recall what it's zoned. And you said uh, construction no, is. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, that's zoned A5, but it is encumbered by that 
uh, A5 is a residential single family residential. house, very similar yeah. to what y'all have in Lost Spurs and Lost Creek. Um, but it does have the issue of the overhead transmission lines being located on the southern portion of its property. Right. Correct. And you said construction is only during the daylight hours. Is that like 7 a.m., 6 a.m.? 7 through 6, correct. 7 through 6, okay. On Monday through Friday. Okay. Okay, on, on, on occasions, the contractor, if they need to speed up construction for, for any reason, uh, they might ask to work on a Saturday, but they have to let the city know in advance. And it would be 9, nine through 5 if they were to work on Saturday. But that's not the rule. That's the exception. Um, on the other side of Ponderosa, between the park and us, where you've got like the new park sidewalk coming out to meet the roadway sidewalk, is that field, are you buying all of it for the right of way or are the people that own it now still going to own part of that or is that going to become more park or just an empty field? Do you know? Are you talking uh, south? East of the roadway of the proposed roadway. Um, I mean, so where you're, top, right where you're pointing. You my, yeah. Sorry, so that, I don't have access to the. I don't have video. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> so you know, uh, Dove Ranch, all those houses that are backing onto the field currently. Uh -huh. So the area where you were just talking about with the power lines is on one side of Ponderosa. I'm talking about the other side, which is the field between Ponderosa and our current park. So I, I, what's going to become of that piece of land once this roadway is built? So that's still private land. Yeah, it's it's not it's, it's not, not uh, it's not going to be a park. It's still private land. Okay, so it won't be part and, of the right of way. Right, and I think I believe. Jacob, you correct me if I'm wrong, but that's still zone A5, correct? Between Ponderosa and the park? Uh, yes, sir. That is zone A5 there. So all of that land that's vacant between the park and the new roundabout at Beach Street is zoned A5. Okay, so somebody might build a house like right next to the park or something. Correct. <laughs> or many houses because A5... Uh, is for uh, minimum size is 5,000 square feet per lot. So um, they can build, you know, maybe a row of houses. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, basically, we're going to have a better connector better than Keller Hazlitt's. Uh, no, no plans for Keller Hazlitt at all? Not currently. No, Keller Hazlitt. At one time there was a discussion to close it, uh, but that um, we desisted on that idea. And so it's going to remain open. It's going to connect to Westport Parkway, not the way it but connects today. Where it connects, it looks like it's not going to cross the parkway, so you, you're only going to be able to go correct. right? Yes, that's correct. You'd have to. So that ought to cut down on traffic. I don't understand the point of that segment then, really. <laughs> well, it's access to that to those lands that are adjacent to them. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So we should have fewer people, hopefully, coming into our neighborhood and not coming all the way to the roundabout. Like currently, correct. they may that immediate turn and go on to Keller Hazlitt, but now there would be no point because they can't turn left from there. Correct. That'll reduce those left turns that are made on Keller Hazlitt from South Alta Vista. Right. So, because they might as well go to the Alta Vista roundabout and then turn Southwest if they're going to uh, 
I-35 or right. I don't know yet. Yeah. Do you have a start date in mind for next month, or is that still kind of up in the air? Um, I am shooting for the middle of April, so I mean, uh, as soon as I can get a um, reconstruction meeting scheduled, and then uh, that doesn't mean the contract will be out there immediately, but uh, we can um, basically get everything set up for him and and um, begin the project. So um, I'm hoping for by by the end of April for sure. So um, I don't have that date scheduled yet, but. Okay, great. Ordinarily, yeah, ordinarily we have the pre-construction meeting with the contractor first, and then we have this community meeting so that we can bring the contractor to this meeting to, to help us with uh, that kind of information. But this time is, we did it the other way around just to, so we could expedite the community meeting so that we could start construction sooner. So, uh, can you explain that little piece in green coming off the new four lands to Keller Hazlet, if that's just a small connection there. No, all the right, way close to the I first. This, yeah, that, that one. Yeah. It's uh, basically this part of the road will be no more, right? So it's just going to take this road and um, make us, we'll make a stop sign here, stop intersection. And so we'll have to turn right and it looks, there's a VLF turn lane on this um, here. So people can go on to Ponderosa and then, or, or this way. So go ahead, sorry. Oh, okay. I think no, I, I, see, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, sir. And the reason that that is shaded green, it probably lost some context because this was from another exhibit, but the green color is indicate, indicative of asphalt paving, whereas the yellow um, shade is indicative of concrete paving. So that's why you have the different colors. It doesn't <clears throat> provide any less service. It's just a different surface. Oh. Thank you all for doing this. Well, no, I any if there. Thank you uh, for attending. We appreciate it. Um, any other questions? Um, we don't mean to hold everybody. Um, if you're, if you've got what you need, if I can put up the the contact slide again. Um, if you think of anything later, um, that's my address and and contact information there. Um, is there going to be, you're going to post a video of the meeting for those who could not, could not attend? Yes, I think we posted on our, on the project website. Yes, sir. it'll be on our, it'll be on our city's YouTube channel and we'll have a link to that 
um, on the project page. So you, and anybody who was unable to attend can watch. Do you have the project's uh, web page website address somewhere on here? Or how do we find that page? I will, I will, uh, I'll give you the link here in just a second. Great, thanks. I believe in general, you can go, uh, if you're looking for any other project as well, there's a, I believe it's on the bottom of the Fort Worth Texas.gov site. There's a, a link to projects and um, if I'm not mistaken, it might be under the TPW um, page, but there's a link to projects and then you can find um, all the projects that we're currently handling. So um, in general, I'm just gonna try to get the, this link I guess here, so. <laughs> well, wow. interestingly enough, I'm not finding the link. I know it's there because I created it, but it's not there. Um, let's go in another way. Patty, for some reason, it's not showing up. Um, the easiest thing to do would be uh, when you go to the city's website, just search Westport and it should pop up. Um, obviously not tonight because for some reason it's not there. So I have to look into that. Uh, I can also email it to you. Uh, I think I saw an email come in from you yesterday. Yeah. I, I have um, I have Patty's email address. On, uh, we'll try to get it to you. Um, I'll write a note here. That'd be great. Thank you. I tried searching for it too and I couldn't find it. So. Okay, I think um Unless there's any other um, questions, I'm I'm uh, thinking we might adjourn. Unless yeah, anybody else has anything. Uh, so again, I appreciate your attendance and uh, and and your attention. So and your patience. So um, hope you all have a good night. Um, and uh, um, hopefully we'll have this project on rolling here shortly. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.